Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Type 1 Thursday on the Low Carb Universe uh, social medias. And I am Hannah Boetius, one of the co-founders of the Low Carb Universe and of course also a long-term Type 1 diabetic. And otherwise it would be weird if someone else had these uh, sessions. Anyway, we are live today talking about fasting and type 1 diabetes. Should you do it? Is it possible? I will be arguing with you very, very soon. But I just wanted to add a little disclaimer, just like Bitha does, that I am not a medically trained person. I have training within nutrition, but not any formal medical training. And I prefer it that way. But if you don't, then maybe, you know, you should know about it at least. <laughs> so welcome to this week's episode of type one thursday hey that's better fantastic so fasting and type one diabetes that's always a hotly debated topic should you do it is it possible won't i go low won't i be hungry are some of the normal um things and i actually got a question about it as well and of course but i wanted to go through first the reasons for fasting because there are many Mm, and uh, the reasons could be, for example, religious. If you fast for, for Ramadan or Lent or something, that could be one uh, reason to, to fast. It could also be ahead of a medical procedure. You could have to fast or want to fast. Or also, for example, for a cleansing and a detox, which I'm not quite, you know, 100% um on board with the whole sort of fasting for cleansing like that for me is a little bit weird but or detox or juice cleanse or something uh i'm not quite okay with that but that's just me and you might be of a different opinion and in that case i would like you to write that in a comment somewhere and uh let me know what you think about it anyway so i also got a question about intermittent fasting because that's what we're talking about today. We're not talking about religious fasting. We're not talking about ahead of medical procedure or, you know, even a juice cleanse. We're talking about intermittent fasting, which is the big and bold and beautiful topic at hand right now in the low carb world, in the diabetes world. And first and foremost, of course, in the type two world, but we're pushing it to type one as well. And we're hoping we'll get a good um, run through about it. So. I got a question from a wonderful viewer of Type 1 Thursday. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful when you send me questions because that, that makes my world and my life just that much easier. Anyway, the question goes, are you fasting? I fast until lunch. What are your thoughts on fasting? And how many meals do you have a day? Well, I actually answered the last part of the question last week and probably uh, more times than that. And I personally eat also fast until lunch. So I eat two meals a day, one at midday and one around sort of seven or eight in the evening. So I get that natural um, sort of gap between eight, nine-ish and, or eight, eight, thirty. <laughs> and until lunch the next day. So that becomes sort of a 16, eight approach, which is highly debated and I will go through uh, the timings a little bit uh, with you because there are, of course, different versions of intermittent fasting. You can go 16-8, which is basically skipping breakfast. That's all you do, but they make it sound fancy with numbers and stuff. And you can also choose to turn that one around. So you do an 18-6 instead. So that means you're fasting for 18 hours a day and you're eating window and you can split that up into different meals if you want. Uh, probably two would be good within that six hour uh, window. Or you can do a 24 hour fast. So an OMAD, one meal a day, that is also possible. You can do a 48 hour fast, 72 day fast, longer fasts, weekly fasts. You can do periodic fasts where you fast sort of into like every now and then you don't really have a schedule for it, but hey, that day you don't really feel like eating that much, so you won't. So that uh, is also an option. But I would say uh, as a type 1 diabetic, so that you keep your problems to a minimum, I would keep it up to sort of 
24, 48 hour fast, if you can handle it, and I'll tell you how in a little bit. But anything beyond that might get a little bit more complicated because, of course, the, the thing is when you fast, you also get, of course, more insulin sensitive. And I will go through the pros and cons in a little bit. But yeah, that is the biggest maybe problem because your body will be fine without food as long as it gets the hydration in terms of sort of herbal teas without any additives or water, of course, plenty of water, even salt water, then your body will be fine. Uh, it won't uh, be hungry for that. And if you feel hunger, then just break the fast. It's not harder than that. Just do it. It doesn't really, no one's going to die if you start eating again. Um, if you start eating again when you weren't supposed to or you had set up that time frame for yourself. So basically, how do you fast? That is very easy. You just don't eat. Just don't eat. And that's the whole thing. And we, because uh, we have so many preconceptions uh, about what it means to fast and, and what you should be eating and what you should be drinking and all these things. But it's just very easy when you intermittently fast. It just means don't eat. It's not harder than that. And as I said, hydrate. Make sure you hydrate during your fast. So you drink black coffee, tea without additives, uh, and plenty, plenty, plenty of water. And if you fast for a longer period of time than just 16 hours or 18 hours, make sure you get that very beneficial sea salt in. And if you fast for longer than that, you know, bone broth is very, very good. But I don't think, maybe in the beginning, until you get used to it, but uh, an intermittent fast of sort of 16 to 18 hours, I don't see would require a bone broth uh, supplement necessarily, but you could do that in the beginning until you get used to it, of course. So this also goes back to that breakfast isn't necessarily the most important meal of the day, which you may or may not have understood that I think anyway. Um, but, you know, it can be very good for you, so you have to choose your fasting window in, uh, depending on what works for you. So that's also very individual, which seems to be a common theme in my lives over here. But anyway, um, and of course, eat when you're hungry. If you listen to your body, instead of looking at your watch or, you know, have this um, app on your phone that tells you when you can eat or not in terms of uh, intermittent fasting, just listen to your body and you will get those natural windows. I really think that it is uh, very possible that your body will tell you that you're actually fantastically happy for 16 hours a day and you don't have to eat during those 16 hours a day. A day. But maybe, you know, the two meals uh, around in the afternoon or in the morning, depending on how you are working the best and how you function the best, is your body will tell you. So don't worry, don't put too much thinking into it listen to your body and on your digestion and your um, food and hunger and all of this stuff and you will know when your body needs to be fueled up. So is it safe for type 1 diabetics to, uh, to fast, to intermittently fast? And of course it is safe. It is, you do have to, as always, you have to plan a little bit around it, but don't worry, it is perfectly safe for you to fast 16, 18, 24 hours. It's fine. 23, 1 is absolutely fine if you feel comfortable with that. I personally did a few 24 hour fasts and I do them still if I notice that I've had a period where I've been really insulin resistant. Then I do a 23 hour or 24 hour fast and that's fine. Like my body can totally cope with that. I have to start looking out with my basal um, dose, which I will get to a little bit later, um, sort of when I go longer than 20 hours, and then I have to start looking out for it. But until then, I can go happily as long as I'm hydrated. So it is safe. You do have to keep an eagle eye on your blood sugars, as always, though. So it's not nothing that changes with, with a fast but you have to keep an eagle eye on your blood sugar, which is of course where a CGM helps again, or a flash glucose monitoring system, so you don't have to prick yourself all the time, although you should probably uh, keep a closer look on it anyway. And of course, 
this is where your basal insulin, your long-acting insulin has to be very well tuned and your other medications if they depend on food. But this is also, of course, a great time to do some basal testing so that you do check your blood sugar every hour for when you're awake. And if you are, when you're sleeping, you check it every second hour so you don't have to get up quite as often. But so that you know how much, because of course the basal insulin or your basal insulin and long acting insulin is supposed to keep your blood sugar level unless you eat anything. So unless your blood, your basal insulin is doing that, then it's something wrong. So if you go too low while you fast, then you, you need technically less basal insulin. If you go too high, you need more. And yeah, but we'll talk about basal testing in another episode, of course, of a type one Thursday. So what are the pros and cons of fasting when you are a type one? Well, the pros are very similar to any other one fasting, any other fasting protocol and all the benefits you can see there. It's easy, it makes it easy. It doesn't clog your day with cooking three times or six times or preparing food. And it does uh, mean less blood glucose fluctuations also, because if you wake up and at a good number in the morning and then don't eat breakfast until lunch, that morning is also gonna be clearer for you and have less fluctuations. Uh, you will, it, it can be used as a weight management system, a, um, a weight management system, a weight loss system as well. It can increase your insulin sensitivity, which is something that we all appreciate as type ones most of the time, apart from when it catches you off guard like it did me uh, these past 24 hours. I have no idea why I suddenly became more, um, sensitive towards insulin, but it is, of course, something that we want to achieve is to become more insulin sensitive. So we can use less and so that we can use more of that uh, law of small numbers that I talked to you a couple of weeks ago, about a couple of weeks ago. So that's not a bad idea, huh? Also, uh, it teaches you to distinguish between mental hunger. So when do you eat for emotional things or or for stress, or, or for uh, when you think you're hungry, and when are you actually hungry? It's actually a very, very cool test. So I suggest that you uh, try it out for that sake, if nothing else. And this also uh, teaches you a lot about your relationship to food, especially the sort of longer fast, the 24 to 48 hour fasts and beyond. They really teach you about what what your relationship to food is you know if you have to have food but your body's not hungry you notice that you're you're on, only mentally hungry then that's a good teaching about yourself you all you also notice that you get more energy uh, the less you bother your your uh, your body with with unnecessary meals of course i do have to also put in the disclaimer that i have never had a formally diagnosed eating disorder. So that can, of course, be a thing if you have, and if you're still battling with that, fasting might not be the best thing for you. As final positive point pro for it, it is, of course, autog autography. <laughs> I think I'm saying that right. Uh, it is, of course, when the body clears out the cells that are dead or, or have already been used and have gone through their lifespan, then fasting makes it easier to get rid of these cells and clean out the body, which can make you look younger. It can make you look more uh, toned, more fit like that. But it can, of course, also impact your energy in that way. The only possible con of a fast fasting protocol when you are a type 1 is, of course, a hypoglycemia. So if you go too low while you're fasting, you have to, of course, break the fast, first of all. Have your glucose, always treat with glucose, pure glucose uh, when you're low, so that you know exactly, so that you can bring it back to a stable and safe level. But apart from that, and that won't even happen if your basal insulin, your long-acting insulin, is properly dialed in to your needs. Of course, in any case, if you have a hypo, treat it 
don't leave it just because you have to or your the app on your phone doesn't tell you or you know you're not really hungry if you're low you're low and you eat that is the strategy we're taking here so should you fast as a type one knowing all of this that i told you now should you fast as the type one and you know what if it sounds appealing to you then do it that's all i can say because maybe fasting isn't the right thing for you and that's fine maybe low carb isn't the right thing for you and that's fine too but i do encourage you to to try it because it can be a very powerful tool for you in your diabetes management toolcase. And uh, just as low carb is, so can also fasting be. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. That's all I'm saying. Just make sure that you keep an eagle eye on your blood sugars, uh, that you keep an eagle eye on your insulin, what you're doing with that. Maybe not. If you become more insulin sensitive when you fast, your corrections, if you go high, uh, are going to be more powerful. So keep that in mind. And also hydration. Drink a plenty of water, peeps. <laughs> then, of course, this does take a little bit of patience, especially if you notice that you are mentally hungry more than you're bodily hungry. It will take some patience to figure all of that out. And make sure you take notes when you do fast the first couple of times of blood sugars, of how you feel, of what you did, so that you can either tweak it or do something different or you know something like that and so that you notice the patterns for next time you try it's always a powerful tool to journal and take notes and only if only to see the patterns and of course eat when you're hungry that's the whole point if you don't eat when you're hungry then when should you eat that is a very good question that i keep asking myself and the reason why i don't have breakfast anymore because I'm just not hungry at that time of day, and I'm fine with that. My body is fine with it, my blood sugars are fine, my health is fine with it. So that's what I had to say about fasting and type one diabetes. I did get a question. Is fasting suggested for food addicts? Well, actually, why not? That could be an excellent way to uh, realize uh, what kind of foods you're addicted to, how you're addicted to them, and maybe, I'm not an expert on fasting or food addiction, but in my mind it sort of sounds logical that that could be a great tool to help you get over it. Not maybe when you have an eating disorder, but for food addiction, I couldn't see why not. I will ask Bitten Jonsson, who is a proper expert on the topic, and get back to you. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have great success with your intermittent fasting protocol. And I can't wait to see you next week on Type 1 Thursday. Bye-bye.